Frankie, we've got some private selections today on BoxMag. We opened these on a recent unboxing we and did? they caught our attention. A couple really nice looking wow. private selection Macs. I love the boxes. They're similar to a series of other Macs we've tried. There's ones that was Sophia's yeah, and there was new... ones that was specially selected. Yeah. But they all look the same and now we got private selection. They all seem to be cut from the same cloth. And there's also tops too. It's like the photos were taken on the same day yeah. with just a different bowl. I yeah. think that it might be different manufacturers all trying to copy each other. They yeah. stand tall always and yes. top wise. Yeah, you can have them shelved either way for maximum retail convenience. Decadent Gouda. We love Gouda. Sure, we've had the smoked Gouda. My best Gouda Mac so far is the Walmart. It does wow. really taste like smoked Gouda. That's that's awesome. This is like Cracker Barrel levels good. Wow. Spicy Poblano. I don't even know what Poblano is. Is it a cheese? I think, it, is it a pepper? Is it an herb? <laughs> is it a pasta? Spicy poblano. I'm kind poblano. of in the mood for a little spice this morning. Yeah, you can use a little spice in your life. The poblano is a mild chili pepper originating in the state of Pueblo, Mexico. Okay. Dried, it is called ancho. So why didn't they use the right term then? Why are they using the raw term? Putting on airs. Yes, yeah, putting on airs. That's <laughs> what Mr. Max are definitely doing. Yeah, it should say that in the little thing. Putting, putting on, on airs. airs. <laughs> Have you ever had a truffle mac in this kitchen that wasn't a little too much truffle? Um, didn't, well, we, wasn't the Sophia one okay? It's possible. It's on par with the Rollins, I'd it say. It is, it's very similar. It's a strong truffle flavor. It's not bad though. And then finally, sweet pimento now. Yeah. Never had a pimento mac in we this kitchen. Never had a pimento mac. It would be a, 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 a cold day in heck when I was eating pimento mac. It is still pretty cold out and yeah. we are in heck. It looks like good pasta. The, che yeah. the cheese are all very experimental. Yeah, they, a they advertise it as bronze cut Pipette Rigante. Yeah, no stories. No. no, you don't have room for stories when you got the box label on two sides, you know? Yeah, fine by me. Oh, the pasta is very nice. This is actually bronze dye. I think it's appropriate that we yeah. talk about topical events. Okay, sure. Not COVID-19. Yeah. Not elections, nothing like that. Yep. Yeah. John accidentally spilled an entire container of dish soap in the back hallway. And, and let's be clear, it's not just a little household container like this one, right? Industrial. It's not, it's not one of these. It's a big, gigantic gallon container that I buy at Lowe's of palm olive dish soap. I'm out here in the kitchen, we're setting up things ready to shoot. And then the reason it happened was because we were sorting through. Yeah, I was trying to look some Max, there's too much stuff piled up on that desk. It slid off and I was like, ah, fine, the napkins fell on the ground. I'll deal with that later, throw them away. And I hear John go, Oh, I've made a mess. <laughs> oh, I've made a very big mess. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice I was stepping in it. Yeah, be careful. It's super slippery, of course, because it's dish detergent. Getting some Macs off the desk and there was too much stuff piled up. I didn't even know it was there. Matt must have put it there. I wanted to ignore it at first, maybe be in denial. Maybe it's not as bad as you saying. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. So I go back there. I see, you know, blue goo all over the place. <laughs> and him staring at it for the last two minutes. I had many different ideas of how I was gonna approach this. I have a carpet cleaner, right? And get that out and use it to suck up all of the stuff. You were looking for automated processes. Yeah, I was looking for things that I can accomplish. This is not necessarily how I would go about this. <laughs> how would you? I wouldn't use napkins because they're not absorbent at all. Well, they already fell on it. So. Oh, I see. Well, at least everything smells palm olive fresh. But we did it, but it, it did leave a very slippery floor back there. Yes, there's still a situation that has to be dealt with. So I, I used to be a busboy at this like coastal restaurant down, yeah. down the street here yeah. when I was uh, 16 or so. I was like an MVP butter. Yep. I would, I would do this thing, this very obnoxious thing, where if a waitress was carrying a bunch of dishes away, yep. I would actually go and intercept them. So she was like gonna bring a bunch to the kitchen. I would actually grab them from her to yeah. just free her up and let her go to, yeah, the, yeah. to the next thing. They love that. Yeah. I remember one time we did a briefing and everybody went around, they were like, name your MVP for the night. And like yeah. everybody named Frankie. Cause I was just like really going after yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, really. I really yeah. wanted to get those tips. Yep. So one of the ways that I overachieved yep. was if there was a banquet or there was a large group, they would use those giant trays yep. and they would just kind of stack the dishes on the giant tray instead of running them back and forth to the kitchen. Yeah. And eventually you would just take them all. Think about it, there's ceramics heaps. and dishes yeah. and heaps. Napkins thrown on top of it. Yeah. The most unprofessional way to handle it would be to take both sides, especially as a 16 year old small guy. Yeah. Lift it up and go like this. Yeah, go like that through the restaurant. But I learned a really good technique of doing the- The, the shoulder The push. shoulder push. Yeah. And, and even with all that unbalanced weight, 
if you could kind of find the right balance, you could actually feel pretty secure with it. Now, yeah. somebody would watch you go by. Yes, and they'd be like, and they'd Whoa. be like, you got it? They would always go, you got it? I better, because I don't know how I could possibly, like, if I said, no, no, help. <laughs> I don't think we could, like, hand it off. <laughs> no. Like, the important thing is getting this to the kitchen and then onto the thing, yes. right? But there was this one time, man. Somebody was going in and out of the kitchen really fast. Here I come. They don't see me. Yep. The swinging kitchen door, all it has to do is go dink yep. on the side of the yep. tray. And, then the and it goes like this. A massive amount of yeah. it. Just a Unbelievable amount um, of it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's a fancy restaurant. Everybody everybody is paying 70 bucks yeah, a, yeah. a meal. Yeah. The shattering of dishes, <laughs> the sound of it, when they all go at the same time like that, yeah. it sounds more like <sighs> Yeah, it gets every single person in the yeah, place's whoosh. attention. Yep. You feel a, like a sense of dread and death. Yeah. Sometimes you crack a plate, whatever things happen yeah. in restaurants, people will go, woohoo, or they'll, they'll yeah. like applaud, or they'll go, nice job, idiot, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This was, everybody felt that sense of dread. I actually remember hearing the whole place went, oh. <laughs> but yeah, you actually, you feel like, you got in a car accident. Yeah. For like the next like like three hours, you feel like you. <laughs> everybody's like, "Are you all right?" You What's okay? important is that you're all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? The dishes we can replace, we yeah. can rebuild. But they, uh, God help you if you do it again next next week. <laughs> did they make you pay anything for the dishes, no. or just no? No. Oh. I did rage quit that place though. Yes. Somebody on the men's staff would clean the men's restroom yeah. on rotation. Yeah. So that there's not like a bathroom guy. Yeah. And then also they would do the same with women to the women's room. Yep. It kind of very quickly became, again, because like I make myself available, I became the bathroom guy very quickly, uh, but at least it yeah. was just for the men's room. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, it was not to gross anybody out, but like there was a lot of drinking going on at this place, and so like purple vomit would happen. Ooh. And, the, and it, like, like the dish soap, you're like, what do I do? I, yeah. Do I wipe it up? Or do I like, like, what I would, there was a drain in the center Thankfully, of the floor. Yeah, you could just like hose down. I would just hose place. it down, yeah. yeah, exactly. But then the waitresses started going, Frankie, you're always so helpful. Can you do the ladies' room tonight? So now I'm doing both bathrooms. They were asking every night. Yeah. I, I started getting like really attitude-y about the, having to clean both bathrooms. Yeah. And then like the, the sub manager picked up on that and was yeah. like, Can, we gotta talk about your attitude. And then they brought me to the owner and the owner was like, I don't want it. Like, he was like, this is the end of your crappy attitude. And yeah. I was like, well, this is the end of my job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. And I was 16 and I quit yeah. and it was, yeah. it was bad. It was glorious. And stuff. But uh, that was the last time I ever, I will probably ever rage quit in my life. There's, yeah. The stakes are, too high now. Yeah. You, can't, you can't just walk away. You can't just You say, can't just turn it Goodbye. off. Goodbye. You just don't turn it off. How is the pasta quality? Is Excellent. Good? Yeah? <laughs> Hello. Hello. That, that, uh, that triggered my scale. No. Somebody had to. <laughs> hey, hey. It's a good joke. I'll allow it, but hey. While we're on the topic of bathroom stories, here's another one. I've, I don't think I've ever told you this story. I used to be in band in high school. Yes, yes. One time at the high school, we were getting ready for an event. I had to change into my uniform. So I went into the bathroom and started to change. And I didn't realize that I had walked into the women's mm. bathroom instead of the men's bathroom. And women start coming in, you know. I'm in a stall. I was very like, you know, what do I do? What do I do? I just ended up, you know, I finished dressing and I left. And all the girls screamed, ah! They were all just standing around. It was okay. In the end, everything was okay. Well, how old were you? That's, that's important. 16. 15. Could have went worse. You know, I didn't have much interest in the women then. I don't right. now. You right, know, it's, right, it, right. It, it, but, And you think that they got that essence from you? They were like, this is a harmless one. I often wonder about that. Like, yeah. if I look back at old videotapes of myself, especially from, like, uh, the early John Hunt show, I just look very gay, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't read to me, like, like, all right, this guy's a rooster in the hen house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody get this wolf out of here. anybody was ever... I thought I was fooling everybody. You're like, oh, this is gayer than I expected. <laughs> oh. Hi, my name my name is Jonathan Hunt, and today we'll be discussing oral sex. <laughs> this is such a, this is a good quality pasta, so I'm having a little trouble determining how al dente we should cook it. Try one and let me know, LMK. Try one and LMK, sup. One more minute, I agree. Yeah. That's what you should have said when you were in the ladies' room when they all screamed. You should have said, sup. <laughs> You're looking great, by the way. Oh, thank you. I'm wearing Nina's uh, box mac shirt. That's amazing. It's pretty weird. In terms of like weight loss efforts, I don't think you need to like swear off any food in particular, except maybe pasta. It'll make its way into your life too many ways. It's funny sometimes when new fans will find the show and they'll be like, oh, I was recommended like your very first episode and I loved it and so I kept watching. 
And I'm like, the, the first episode hooked you? It wasn't a very good one. That was like exploring the concept. Yeah. You know? It's like the pilot episode of a sitcom where they have like a different mom. Yeah, totally. It's not even Bob Saget yet. So I can't help but notice you're putting pasta in and cheese after. I, I, I chaos. Just, total chaos, Frankie. Total chaos. In these difficult times, we don't get picky about things like cheese. People like that Pewter Smith, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I love Pewter Smith. And actually, let me uh, give you a little preview. I recently suffered a tragic mouse-related AC loss. Where's the mouse? Right there. Uh huh. Mice are cute. Mice are cute. I hate mice so much. Which, by the way, this week they're gonna come out, they're gonna take the unit away, rebuild it somewhere, and then bring it back and restore it. Wait a minute, at what cost? Uh, probably between three and five thousand dollars. So not a complete replacement. But it's still no chump change. Did your insurance cover it whatsoever? None. Absolutely not. What was their reasoning? Uh, that rodent damage is not covered. Oh, bastard. Period. In the mouse theme, there was a old computer, 1983 IBM, that I found online uh, for 40 bucks, which is very cheap for one of those, but it had a mouse nest in it. So You can't escape the mice, man. No, I, I did it intentionally because we're going to try to set, to do some retribution to see if we can recover that PC on a future episode of Pewsmith. Since we don't recognize the flavor of pimento, do you want to try sure. pimento first? Let's give it a try. It tastes like relish a little to me. Yeah. Well, it's a sweet flavor, mm. and they say sweet pimento. I like it. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Mm. Pasta's very good. And there's a little bit of back-of-the-throat spice. It's actually pretty good. Bit. It's not the first thing you think of when you think of a mac and cheese, but it's also not the last. No, um, I think it actually really complements the cheese very nicely. The little bit of spice is really nice. I'm really digging that. So does that mean you like pimento? I guess I do. Great. It makes you wonder if a little bit of relish in a regular mac and cheese would work. Yeah, doesn't it make you wonder? The next one up is the Sweet spicy poblano. Po uh, spicy poblano. Ooh, I'm kind of digging it. It's very good. The spice is awesome. Very present, but not overwhelming. Yeah, it's very nicely balanced. And so rare to find. And then the uh, the, really cre good. the creamy factor, yeah, these are good. Like they do remind me a bit of the Walmart artisan craft, except also the pasta is bigger and better. The pasta is better than that. For so sure. we're like on our way to like top tier A plus Mac. Yeah, really good, really good. I cleaned my plate. I couldn't help myself. Okay, truffle. Well, shockingly, they've gone extremely light with the truffle. Yes, and that's good. It's just barely present. It's just to give you a hint of it. I think if somebody served this to you and didn't tell you there was truffle in it, you'd just be like, "This is super good mac and cheese." Yeah. And yeah, you wouldn't I don't necessarily think you can identify the truffle. No. Well, let's finish with the gouda. Sure. It does remind me of the flavor of that Walmart one a lot. It does. Uh, it's a little artificially strong for me. Well, only in the sense that it's a big transition from the last one. Yeah. But it's good. If that was your first one, you'd like it. Yeah. I, I mean, I do. I do like it. It's good. Look, I think that these are excellent Macs. They are. The spicy poblano and the sweet pimento are the ones I would buy. Definitely highly recommended from here. Some of the best Macs we've probably ever had on the show, and very easy to cook, obviously, because they're deluxes. Yeah, the, the pasta is awesome. Yeah, the pasta is great. But truffle has a a good like base note to it or something. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's, it's very full. It's probably from the truffle, but not used to obliterating effects. This is the pimento? Yeah, the orange is the pimento. That's fantastic. You can't go wrong with this one, guys. Ha <laughs> ha! Before we go, I want to advertise something real quick. Everybody knows by now, hopefully, EJ and I do a podcast on our Patreon. All you got to do is donate the minimum amount, which I think yeah. is $2 a month to listen to it. We do video. We do often two plus hours of content. We talk about everything and anything. It's one of my favorite projects that we work on. On the weeks that we do not have content, yep. which is now occasionally, I put up clips from that Patreon show on the Clips channel. Yes, I so, saw some of those coming through and they're great. If you've still not subscribe to the Clips channel. You gotta go over there, RCE Pods and Clips, subscribe, and you'll get to see those little 10 minute clips, little previews from the uh, Patreon pod. And then if you really like them, you gotta get to yeah, the Yeah, you gotta get over there. So next time we have, uh, we were sent every single Aldi. The whole black line. We're gonna try to chop into them. All right, we're gonna do that next time on Box Mac. <laughs> Fair with high clouds, mild showers, ha Total chaos! Within two hours, the weather it creates will stamp this city flat. To the Technodrome! <laughs> <laughs>